Welcome to the final part of Let's Play Beast Wars Transformers. We just finished off that uh, huge ship. Yes. And I have brought in my alternative co-commentator for the final yes. 30 minutes involved. <laughs> and uh, that said, I was expecting more of a dat ass from him. No. <laughs> Please leave the David K impersonations to me. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're better at that. I'm not inducing chaos control, but I am gonna fast forward through some parts that are. You know, a little too uh, long or repetitive or just retreading old ground, such as this stupid platforms. Uh, in the meantime, what can I say? It's a volcano. And from what I remember, you're a bit lava phobic, aren't you? Doesn't help seeing the tranny that played Drew Carey's brother fall into a trail of lava in a movie that wasn't very good with Tommy Lee Jones a few years back. Which one was that? Volcano. Oh, Volcano. Oh, God, that movie. Beast yeah, that kind of would have scared me too, but I don't know. I I, I have since seen Laura Croft's lava death. Not no, she just catches on fire and depending falls over. On the effects, depending on which version of the game you're using and the level of graphics. Well, there's the anniversary version, although I think I avoided it most of all in that game. I think I should pick that one up, really. Once again, I am a fucking arachnid. Why can't I climb fucking walls? Walls, those are artificial mountains, and you're made of a foreign material to this world. Well, the spiders are always able to climb up walls in the TV show, the cartoon, the whatever. Yeah, again, games never are consistent when they're based on a pre-existing intellectual property. No shit, I mean, I look at this game and I have consistently questioned exactly where on earth the Maximals and Predacons get all the material for the warfare they the war they go through in this particular game. Drones, cities. Now what are you staring at? Were you trying to look at her ass more closely that time? Granted, she is a Black Widow. Black Widows have big butts. Victor and I already had a short talk about that voice actress. Voice actress for, Jap for Japanese Beast Wars Black Widow. Oh, well, what else has she done? She's mostly a Canadian actor, so I can't really honestly tell you. Oh, it's Vinci's Inquest, but nobody here has ever watched that show. No. Hockey hosers. What? Are are you still trying to put on an accent? Danger. Energon what are you talking low. about? Transform I was born in Ontario. I was raised in Halifax until I was four years old, and then I was brought here to this horrid little country. And by the way, you were adopted. You, that's why your birth certificate says you were born in the United States. Iceberg ahead. Danger. Energon Be careful. Shut up! I'll have to bleep that out. Uh, yeah, just don't mind the fast forwarding. I'm doing it so I can make this as sh short enough to get within a s little less than half hour time limit. 
If I hadn't edited it, it would probably be 40-something minutes long, and I, I'm already reluctant to do half an hour. I don't want to go as far as 40 minutes. <sighs> Let's see. Ah, I think we're at the end of the... We're nearing the end of the first volcanic level. Or is this the second? No, this is the first. I can't even tell what I'm fighting. I never will. I finish it off too quickly to even have a look at it. All I know is it shoots fireballs, and that's her. That's how. That's her animation for her special attack. She just goes. No, I'm not bleeping the joke out, I'm bleeping out your name. That's... that's fine. Oh god, I died so many times on this frickin' level. This is the second uh, volcanic level. We are now on approach to the Axelon. I spent so many years watching Canadian television shows and absorbing Canadian culture that I identify myself as being more Canadian than American these days, almost. I don't blame you. <laughs> it seems like most of the better voiced cartoon series out there are done mostly by Canadian companies. And so it just sort of rubs off on you. And me, me, I'm watching the Red Green Show all the time. Yeah, to be truly Canadian, you have to be a fluffy fan, a fluffy talks fan, and you have to be a fan of hockey. And you always have to be making fun of the Toronto Maple, Maple Leafs. Yes, the Maple Leafs are the shittiest team on Earth. If it had been them that Vancouver had lost to, we would have had a nuclear holocaust. Those Canucks really have a hard yeah. time taking defeat. If Pat Shaughnessy is anything to go by, that might actually be true. <laughs> you know, uh, bar? Yeah. Oh god. We are going this far off topic already. Yeah. The Forrest Gump of Canada. Then again, this isn't really interesting yet. It won't get interesting, I think, until... It'll get interesting when it gets interesting. But anyway, we're... These fucking drones... Actually, what we're talking about shows that we really know shit about Canada. Oh, yeah. We... we... I watch, what... Just because I watch 90 hours of Canadian television a month doesn't mean I know anything about Canada. I don't know anything about Canada either. I'm the one that pays attention to what their government does, though. You're the one who pays attention to what any government on this planet does, just so you can say... Just so you can identify what type of crap we're all going through. That's your thing, and I respect that, but uh, you'll keep me out of that, please. Okay. And I keep transforming back and forth just to waste the time, because these platforms are slow. Once again, the platforming in this game... It... It's not bad, but quite frankly, it it seems like there should be a few limit. There should be some limiters here. You come even remotely close to a ledge in the wrong way, and it. Yeah, I'm gonna try anchoring and gravitating myself to the topic of this game, or at the very least, the series that it's based upon. Um, the studio that produced the television series, Mainframe, Rainmaker now finally have their first feature movie coming out in a couple of months, and I thought this is a good time to mention it. Escape from Planet Earth, which has been in production for about five years now, stars the voice of Brendan Fraser, is going to be the first mainstream movie put out by Mainframe slash Rainmaker. Hmm. And you say it's supposed to be like the opposite of... Whoa. Where did that rock come from? It's just reversal of Planet 51. It doesn't sound like it's going to have Planet an original 51, plot at all. Name of it. And that movie wasn't even very good. Uh, I didn't see the whole thing, so I really can't judge. But what I did see of it, 
I wanted to see Planet 51 when it came out because I thought it was Escape from Planet Earth and they just reversed the plot. It turns out that Escape from Planet Earth was actually in production before Planet 51. It's just taken them that long to produce it. Yeah. Lovely camera issues here, how it's always clipping through the wall. Noted that. It is a certain date, and I was asked to do this. I was interested at first, but I kept putting it off because I didn't think there was any point. I figure. We are now... Half of the world is now 12 hours into a certain particular date, and I figure the world's going to end in less than 24 hours. What the hell? But Nibiru hasn't hit the planet yet, so it's not likely to happen. Mm -hmm. As I continuously mention, I do not believe that <laughs> this day is going to be the end of the world in any sense, aside from, you know, maybe the crazies are going to come out of the woodwork and make our lives extraordinarily more difficult than they already are. You know, the funny thing is, nobody's really going crazy right now, even though half of the world is in that date already, here in America. Because America is simply not in that date, and that's what's important, because only Americans seem to believe this trash. Granted, uh, just for the record, this is being recorded, uh... Poking fun at myself because I somewhat believe this trash. What time is it? Uh, it's 8.30 in the evening. That's it. Yeah, local time. I have mentioned in passing that, uh, we are from the corn state. Not me, I'm from Canada. You want to believe that? I'm living in South Dakota right now, for the record. Iceberg... I'm not using these terms right, am I? This is Skype. I'm not sitting Thank next to him right now. Meter low. Sure it is, mister. You don't even know how to use Skype. Without me holding your hand. Not to make fun of you, but really. I have to wonder why half the stuff that I get you started on, you can't really finish yourself. I have no idea what this person is talking about. He clearly doesn't know how to use Skype very well himself either. I sp you know what? No. The Titanic is sinking. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm here in the room with this person. I'll disclose that much information. With this person. You can use my real name. I can bleep out your real name. Or I could just call you Val. Ugh, I hate these pits. Okay, yeah, I, I can't... See. They're still sinking. That's Doug Bunny's middle. You actually used to like that show even more than I did. Doug, Doug Yahtzee funny? Yahtzee. Yahtzee. Oh, I thought you said Yahtzee. Yeah. I'm just remembering a YouTube user by the name of Yahtzee who has been mentioned in passing during Brain Scratch commentaries. So! I've only ever played this game in PC mode. I was never particularly good at it, because I always played as Cheetor for obvious reasons. I don't blame you. Cheetor is one of the more balanced characters. Well, I, I say to... more balanced, but he is super fast. You heard a background noise that was my hands, not my sphincter. Thank you. <laughs> I needed to know that. I mean, for all anyone here might have known that was just something oh never mind but once again I, I we're in the volcanic region effects. that's something that I just do habitually once again we're in the volcanic region on approach to the Axelon uh, notice the problem with me saying that I do believe that I have attempted playing as Dinobot once or twice, since he's my second favorite character in the series. Oh, I... I love Dinobot. And, uh... 
you know, a lot of there are some people who would say his uh, entry into the Hall of Fame was kind, kind of, of a cheat. He's kind but of he fucking deserves it. He fu Dinobot fucking deserves that entry in the Hall of Fame. The anti-hero warrior. And you know, that's the one good thing about him. Beast Wars was his only and his best appearance. He doesn't need it anymore. Hands down. That works. Well, that's because there's never been a series, a television series that has existed outside of, besides that. Well, you would think, you know, series like Animated, which was kind of dedicated to all that sort of, uh, what's the right word? Was he, Cameo was stuff. his character actually in Animated, or was it just suggested? Nope, nope, nope. It wasn't even suggested. Well, it might have been, I'm not sure. They were animated. going to have, like, Incarnations of the Maxwells in the series at one point. I wasn't able to get into it. I mean, they had Black Rack, which yeah. I deeply regret. I had so much prejudice against that show just for its animation style. It was sickening. I hate myself for that. But the show, on the upside, was never shown in its true original format and its original broadcasts. No. We are now given the pleasure of experiencing it in its true format as if it was its first time run on the Hub Channel. Yeah. And I should really be getting watching and or recording episodes of that. Anyway, uh, this place right here, this is the cliff right next to the Maximal Command Center. Right over here, right in front of me, is where the waterfall should otherwise be. And the Axelon is right up there. Am I sensing there's something very incorrect about this whole situation? The Maximals landed in the desert! Danger. Or the savannah. Low. Transform immediately. And... Air Razor! So she does have an appearance in this game. She, she is available for, play, for playing as during the rescue missions, otherwise she's the penultimate boss before entering the Axelon itself. Speaking of which, this is it. You do know what penultimate means, don't you? Yes. Okay. We are now inside the Axelon. This, shir this certainly looks like the inside of the Axelon as it was seen in the show, wasn't it? We are dripping with sarcasm. <laughs> Not good sarcasm. Ah, oh, whatever. I mean, it doesn't even look that big from the outside. It must be the TARDIS. Speaking of which, do you, do you know who the current Doctor is? No, I stopped following after David Tennant. As did I. Vic might know, although I'm not sure he cares about that either. This place is a maze. I swear to God, how do the Maximals find their way around here? I mean, yeah, the dark side is even a, is a maze too, even in the show, but. I know the Axelon isn't. And... Barney mode. I wish I... I could really give him a break for his form. He didn't really come... into his... Truthful greatness until he achieved the dragon form of the third season, which was unfortunate that we only had a limited number of episodes, as that was basically part of the climax of the series. Yeah. We never get to see Megatron in his full form for more than a handful of episodes, and all throughout the Beast Machine saga, he's hidden inside that giant mechanical suit trying to repress his beast form urges. Yeah. You know what happened to his actual beast form? 
Uh, according to the 3H oh. comics co that were done when they were running the Collector's Club, his old form got lumped on his old mentor, Cryotech. Mm -hmm. Ow. What the fuck is that thing? The final insult. What completely destroyed... An otherwise decent extension of the Beast Wars saga for me was the use of Optimal Optimus' former former, proto proto former, former former mech form to be used for Megatron's new form. Ugh, even I thought that was the ugliest, stupidest thing they could ever do in that series, and I didn't even like the design aesthetics of all the characters in that series. Had a very epic finale, but that one thing just completely obliterated, that one aspect, that one technical detail completely obliterated an otherwise decent series. And it could have gone on even in spite of that, but the show's popularity was severely waning on Fox Kids. They just couldn't achieve the audience that they initially had in Canada. But then again, Beast Wars was never a supremely popular show. It never... It, it was never really meant for the mainstream, and that's why I can... That, that's the reason why it is so great. It didn't deliberately try to appeal to the mainstream as so many series have since. It's very unique in its storytelling. Its whole form. Yeah. Unique. But still somewhat limited in what it was capable of doing since it was a... Uh, you know, a fully CG television series era. Sad. Mainframe just disintegrated. It dissolved and became a company that only produced direct straight video Barbie movies. Now they're finally getting a theatrical film produced, and I have yet to see if the animation is even significantly good. It's being distributed by Lionsgate, so I'm not holding out much hope since the last animated, the first animated movie they ever distributed, and what I thought would be the last was the infamously notorious fur faggotry catering ultimate wet dream Alpha and Omega 3D. No offense to fans of that movie, I have friends. I know people, I won't say they're exactly friends, but I know people that are huge fans of that movie for obvious reasons. Okay. I know that my mom has seen it and I haven't and she hated it. <laughs> sure, um... I'm trying to think. Where? What am I? Hmm. Let's see. We're in a lone hall that goes nowhere except here. Mission completed. <sighs> Let's discuss the soundtrack of the game. Uh. Beast mode. Gotta say. Most of it I really love for the, from the PC version. The ones added to... Best PC game soundtrack I've ever heard, in my opinion. I mean, there are lots of great games But I have there. to say one thing, like I said... Uh, PC games go. Like I said in one of the last parts, that one, that one extra theme added to the PlayStation version for the Mission Kill Dinobot, my absolute favorite now. I think, like, next to the Desert Rescue Mission theme. It feels a little too 90s these days, but always felt like something that should play during the Western and... Knights Blade movies. This is sort of not quite the final boss. Uh, can you identify it? I know it's been a while since you've seen the series, but I, I figured the first time I saw that particular shape, I knew what it was. Do you? Yeah. Alright. Right now I'm trying to find a switch to open the gate. I mean, the difference here is it's kind of suspended over the ground in a much bigger area. It's not area. the ship's computer, obviously. Is it the alien technology? What do you mean? That that floating island? No, no, no. The, you were you were pretty much right the first time. Oh. That's Sentinel. Oh, okay. I never realized Sentinel had a physical form. Uh, did you watch the episode of Better Mousetrap? I just skim through it every time I watch it. It's not a particularly loved episode of mine. Uh, I don't blame you. It it's not. I kind of 
kind of like it just sort of for how it's one of those first how good it makes episodes. rat trap look it's one of those first season filler episodes that tries to be you know that that tries to keep that rounded pseudo mainstream appeal by having a more cartoony lean and being extra humorous it's those episodes that pulled people in in the first season then the series got serious the so-called shit got real in season two and three well, that said, it did introduce Sentinel, and it was one of those... Much does it disgust me to use that terminology from a particular movie from a particular director who I have the utmost extreme antipathy for and is the bane of all my existence. Okay. Well... Point is, we first have to defeat Sentinel before Optimus Primal comes out. And with that... Uh, there he is. Up there. Up. Up. There. You can't see him, and he's going to be at a distance for most of the time, so... It does annoy me a little bit, because, you know, you figured it's some final battle between Megatron and Optimus. It would be more than just lasers flying. But anyway, that's it. That's the end. Wow, there's not much time left. Victory. I thought I'd have time to Victory. bring up... Thought I'd have time to bring up a few things. Turns out I don't. Well, we'll have the credits yet to talk about a few things. Here's a few scenes. I'm so worried about making a bigger role of myself than I already am that I never I get to say Cybertron. I intend to. I conquer the galaxy. It doesn't matter every time I open my mouth, I'm digging myself a deeper grave. Huh. Hmm. Well, the Mayans were right about one thing, but they were wrong about which planet. <laughs> Oh, well. We are not amused. The Titanic has hit the ocean floor. I speak. It on, is I, I far speak on the ocean floor. <laughs> I speak on behalf of myself now. But anyway, uh, that was the Predacon campaign for Beast Wars Transformers for the Sony PlayStation. Uh, I hope everyone who has followed us this far has enjoyed what they've heard and or seen, and. Uh, you know, for those of you who haven't heard of or seen this game, I'm I hope you've learned something. Wait. Looks as if we're nearing the end here. It doesn't look like I'm gonna have time to give any final words or comments. Oh, I'm willing to extend it a minute or so out from the end of the credits if you need. Well, for about the 20 or 30 seconds we have left, let's discuss my sentiments on the two greater of the series, what I consider to be, versus the whole of the entire franchise, Beast Wars and Generation 1. I feel that the first season of Generation 1 and the entirety of Beast Wars are very unique to their generation of cartoons. Due to the fact that they seem to have a very gothic, noirish style to them, I, uh, it, it has it's a lot to do with the soundtrack of the first season. I love the opening of the first season. It is so unique to the 1980s to have a theme like that. Some people call it pseudo-western, space-western, or whatever. That style, but oh, it doesn't look like I'm going to get to finish here. No, keep going. Like I said, I'll give you some extra time. Okay. Well, the first season, I understand they're borrowing musical themes from G.I. Joe, which ran for about a year under a different name before Transformers had started in its G1 form. But a lot of that music was a unique style to the 1980s. The series gets better as the series progresses through Season 2, but that's where it reaches peak, obviously, because as the series moves forward, they become more obsessed with becoming more futuristic. The irony in this is that in the time period that this show is set, in the generation and culture that it was designed for, the harder they try to be more futuristic, the more 1980s it becomes. Agreed. I think the first season was probably their peak when it came to the Generation 1 cartoon. 
Second season had some magnificent story arcs, but the filler episodes were not that good. Just the regular in-between one-off episodes were not that good. G.I. Joe is the exact reverse. Their story arcs are crap, but their one-off episodes are brilliant. Yeah, although, eh, it is a little bit I judgmental since we haven't watched, I shouldn't say brilliant, I just started falling in you know, love the with the show based on one episode. It's like these one-off episodes I only start, I've never had any interest in G.I. Joe until they start airing it on Hub Channel. I check out a one-off episode here and there, and I actually enjoy them. Never care for the story arcs, have no interest in the whole series concept whatsoever. It's one-off episodes of G.I. Joe that work. It's the story arcs of Transformers that make it a complete series in the inversion. Well, I I, I kind of have to agree with you, but uh, I think we've gone on long enough now, so... Uh, I suppose that's it. No time uh, for any political commentary? We'll save it for next time. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's the end of the Predacon campaign. Stay tuned as uh, next up I'm going to return to <sighs> Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 where I do uh, the Silver the Hedgehog Let's Play. So until then... Fucking... Come on. So until then, uh, thank you all for watching, and have a happy holiday. Bad idea, bad time.